We're at Robsley Quarry today, we're doing Tierra Skills Day. Did one um, last year in the middle of summer, it was about 40 degrees, which was pretty horrible, so today uh, it's kind of dialed back and uh, we've got kind of the opposite really. It's about 8 degrees, so at least we won't get too hot today. There's a good turn now, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 16, 17 with the weather conditions that's a pretty good turnout we've got some very we've got some red baggers today on the uh, big GS's again we took the big GS's out last weekend was it now? which was fantastic, similar conditions to this but uh, hard work but very enjoyable First into the water jump. Joe was on the on the little bike today last week. It's a bit slime in the middle there. Eh? Ah! <laughs> right, that's incredible that is. Last time we were here, we were actually down in there, in the middle there, where the ducks are headed to. That's actually about, I don't know, 10 feet deep. So that's completely flooded out. Completely. Very challenging conditions today. Oops.
Sykes gun! Sykes gun! Where are we actually going? What are we actually doing? Are we just riding around in circles? What the... Well, we seem to be going down here now. That there is about... There's normally... That's full of water, about 10 foot deep that is. There's a bit of water in there, isn't there? Yeah, we were in there last time. Is that, that where we're going now? Yeah. <laughs> Water crossing, draining. Incredible. my front disc guard on today. Really pleased with it. I just like the look of them. They're supposed to protect your disc but they're quite thin plastic. I'm not sure. I suppose it stops rock clattering against it. Unfortunately for me, my boots don't hold the water out. <laughs> but seeing as they're already wet now, it doesn't really make much difference, I suppose. Challenge on the uh, big bikes. I like a challenge. 
I enjoy watching other people have that challenge. <laughs> So I've chosen these ruts for the first sort of bit because it covers multiple sins on the dirt bike. So they're not too bad, as you can see, so they're quite wide. They're not that thin and it's not that slippy and, and the berm isn't that high. So why do we stand on the pegs on a bike? What, what's the what's the sort of purpose or mentality about why people are saying get on the pegs, get on the pegs, get on the pegs? Moving your weight. Hey, moving your weight. You're moving your weight, yeah. But where are you moving your weight? Back. So, so the centre of gravity is lower. What else? Back. No, not necessarily. So the, the, the pegs on a bike represent the centre of mass and, it, and it's going to be the centre of rotation too. So when we go around corners, the bike is rotated around the foot pegs effectively and the front and the back wheels slip with it. So when we stand up, what we're doing is we're putting our weight through that center of mass of the chassis like the bike was designed it was built that way to do that so well when a bike sat there just like that you could argue that it's got about 50 50 grip yeah there could be some semantics on tire sizes and so on but let's say it's got 50 50 grip the only thing that's going to change how much grip your front or back tires got is you moving your mass for grip so if in your head if you think you, you're not moving your body you're finding grip on a dirt bike you only ever want one tire to grip right from sliding around the corner fishtailing i want to be as far forward as i can because i need the front tire to grip if that slides i'm fucked what the back does doesn't matter in a rut it's the opposite the last thing I want is the front tyre to grip because it will hit the side of the rut, it will start climbing out, I've got to correct it, that's physical, I'll start turning the bike and it'll all go wrong. So the secret to ruts is I want to put as much weight as possible over the rear of the bike. So how am I going to go about doing that? Lean backwards. Lean forward. Definitely not lean forwards. Back, backwards. So if I'm stood up, yeah, I can lean backwards, arms is a good tip, I can have straighter arms so I know that my weight's not forward. So my weight's forward, my arms are going to be like this, my weight's back, my arms are going to be more like this. What about sat down then? Why does everybody, is, what's the fastest way to do this rope, sat down or stood up? Stood up. Add, add. More rear grip. The more rear grip, you can move your weight around faster sat down so the reason green laning when i went from green laning to try to compete and i'm old so i started old the first thing that was drilled out of me by paul bolton was you've got to get over this stand up all the time that's pride but green laners say pride there's nothing wrong with green laning i love green laning but it's pride. A lot of stuff can be done really quickly sat down with very little energy expenditure, but it's technique and it's technique. And so I'll show you where we go wrong generally as green laners, and then I'll demonstrate how to do this rut sat down. So, <coughs> watching you all, because I was up on that bank, <coughs> go by, most of you have sat roughly in this position. So, Anyone know what's wrong with this position? You're too far back. Okay. So what we've said is that we stand up on the pegs 
so that would put our centre of mass and the bike's centre of mass in the same place, right? But my centre of mass is my head and my shoulders. It, it ain't my nuts, right? So now I've moved my centre of mass a good three, four inches back and that makes a massive difference. So, literally, I want to be there. So when I take my feet off, they dangle just in front of the pegs. Now, my ass is over the pegs, my back and my shoulders are over the pegs. So, when you're stood up and you feel like you can shift your weight around, now to get the same effect, all I have to do is straighten my arms, if I want the weight on the back, bend my arms if I want the weight on the front. And this is how, and, if you, and, and, and with this knowledge, like watch Hard and Dora, watch Billy Bull, Manny, watch these fast lads, this is how they sat, and they're just doing this, up the fucking hills. Now, they're not moving their ass, unless it gets really fucking steep, but for 90% of the stuff, you're going to sit forward and then very quick I can do that faster than I can move my body on the pegs yeah so all I've got to do is this so if I go so in this drop I'm going to sit in this position I'm going to lean back because I want the weight on the rear I don't want weight on the front once the clutch is out I'm not going to touch it yeah, so I'm going to get off the clutch because that'll save my hand hurting and getting pumped out and I'm going to rock up and that's it. Didn't even spin his back wheel. Second, I'm going to sit forward. Two. See if anybody moves. Very trusting lads, very trusting. Might be very hard on a big bike because you're in a seat position. But when your feet come off, you should dangle just in front of the pegs, and then you're going to sit nice and relaxed, lean back a bit, get off the clutch and look up. And just try, set off in second, build it up in third, and just try and build the scene. Just look at the end, and it's just so easy. Yeah? So, let's do some laps. <laughs> I didn't quite catch that. Are we doing a lap or is he doing a lap? Are we doing a lap or did he say he was doing a lap? <laughs> oh, heck, I've got to do a lap now. That's what we're here for. Come on then. Let's have it. Let's cool them feet down again in this water. Sim well, simple as that. So very trusting lads, very trusting. When you come back down, I thought you were all going to part like a pair of curtains. But you all stood your ground. Yeah, Full trust in Mr Lindsay. The guy just speaking, his name's Mr Mike Livesey. The guy in red coming up the track is uh, Matt Harris. Both very good riders and they are uh, sharing their skills and knowledge with us today free of charge uh, for the Lynx TRF. So big shout out to those guys giving up their own time. I'm sure they'd rather be here uh, doing full training but instead they stood around telling us what we need to be doing.
Head, look up, still, go. Arms. Sit up, sit up, sit up. Arms straight. No, arms to lean back a bit. Yep. Don't want to matter, don't want to matter. Right, so, so your weight's on the back and the front okay. dancing. You feel the front flow. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, the front is like steering itself. Uh, oh no, I thought I'd turn in there. Oh. Little dog there. Good position, lean back a bit. I keep finding myself leaning a bit far forward. You kind of suddenly, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. Here we go, try to follow this rut here. Too bad. Are we only doing it once? Do I join the back of the queue? Yeah, we join the back of the queue. So I'm going to come through here. No, do we join again? Might as well do it again. So arms in the middle. Okay, nice one. We got BMW. I think that might be Clive. Yep. And, and you go forward a bit more or no? Yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. Yeah, head up. Yeah, I've leaned too far forwards. Oh, I see, I've just bounced back on my seat. Yeah, back end was sideways then. So lean back a little bit more. Front snaking around, but and neutral there. Give it a bit of beans to scale over here this time. Mind you, it makes the turn in tighter, doesn't it? But we, we did it. Matt Harris, he does not need tuition. He has given the tuition. I mean, bloody neutral, aren't I? And it is, but. <laughs> big bikes, look, that is a big bike. And it's fine, look, it gets through, okay. It's not a lightweight like I'm selling, but look at that, these bikes are very, very capable. And there's your proof there. Expertly ridden. Ah, it's a T7. Not as big as the, not as large as the, oh, 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 James.
there we go, that is, oops, look at that. Nearly went in the pink stuff then. Let's <laughs> get the crate turned around again. Have you been through, Steve? Yeah, I've been through it once, I'm going to go through it, you can watch the people for that one. I'm trying to get used to sliding around underneath me. Right? Yeah, I mean, that is, that's even worse than last weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. Because that's, uh, yeah, that's crackers, that is. Yeah. That's what I mean, that's pretty good use of it. I see James on his T7 somewhere. Yeah. Oh, he's behind me, look. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's going, is he off back, look? No, he's, is he? He is, look. Yeah. I'll follow him. No. Are you going? Yeah, oh, car. Not sure if this is still clear, is it? Give you a quick wipe. I think it was. So let's follow, here we go, we've got a, this is a BMW, I think this is a 1200, I've seen a 1250, I've seen a 1200 or 1250s, in fact, I think there's a pair of 1250s, I think this one is a 1250, GS. <laughs> Look at that lot, see? Conditions, that bike will keep you going. And the weight in some respects is helpful in keeping you balanced. Hey, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, I'm leaning too far forwards again. Let's go for this second rut again. Yeah, I've missed the rut. There we go. We're in. We're in second is what we are in. Let's come back round again. I did all some nice new boots, some Liat, uh, I don't know, Enduro Flex 5.5s, but I ordered 44 and a half when they turn up, it says UK 9 on them, so I thought the Euro sizing was uh, to make everything homogenous, but clearly it isn't. The boots I got on today are UK 10, but they're size 47, so it's all over the shop, but uh, Good big shout out to 24MX where I got them from. Uh, they're like, you can send them back, it didn't fit, so send them back free of charge. And uh, although I ain't got my money back on the other ones yet, which I will, I've ordered uh, another pair, 44 and a half, which when I looked at the layout website, it said that they were size UK 10, so they should be alright. The other ones, they're only slightly too small, but I didn't want the money I paid for them, I didn't want to, uh, you know, put up with it, and I want to go touring. Um, across Europe as well, so if they're too tight and you're just going to, by the end of an eight hour day on the bike, you, your feet are going to be killing you, so. Uh -huh. Feedback. If you don't think it works for you, if you've got comments, I'm dead interested in hearing it. You know, I don't think it's a one-way conversation. Um, what I have noticed is when people are, what's the difference between dabbing and paddling? What's the difference? Dabbing one foot, paddling both. No. Paddling. Close. Confidence. Hey. Paddling's confidence. No. 
So it's about a dab is um, <laughs> just. <laughs> Um, a dab is just like... A dab is I'm, I'm coming in, I lose my balance, I just correct myself and I carry on. Badly is... <coughs> Excuse me. Multiple, so basically multiple dabs. Once you dab twice, you're paddling. Yeah? This body position that we're doing, where we sat forward and leant back, is very fundamental to riding a dirt bike. And as we go on to the other exercises, we're going to be using this body position a lot. And the same thing matters with dabbing, in that a general rule, because there are no golden rules, a general rule is if you're paddling, if one foot comes down, both come down. If you have a foot on the peg, both are on the pegs. Yeah? So, had paddling with one leg is a massive recipe for disaster yeah anyone know why hurt yourself. you're gonna hurt yourself it's one of the biggest causes of lower leg injuries on, on the good bikes because what you're doing is you're moving like even now just sat here not doing it on purpose my bike's like that way in it <laughs> because i've got my right foot down if i put my left foot down my bike's going to lean this way and the same things happen when we're paddling and what will happen is because you're paddling because you're not confident Right? You'll hit some or you'll have a knot and the weight of the bike will go that way and this foot will have to save it because you were already out of balance when you hit that little rock or that little hole. So if we're paddling, both feet go down. This really, really, really matters on descents, on seated descents. And if you are doing descents that for you are very steep and that you're probably eight or nine out of 10 for your ability, you're going to probably want to do them sat down and drop your feet and this is where we see massive accidents in Romania where one foot goes down it's super unstable so we're going to try when we paddle to paddle with both feet so the challenge for you then is to do that rut sat down paddling or you all to paddle in first gear with no clutch so Just checking the battery there. No, it's I'm looking up. I'm looking at you now. If I look here, I'll crash. Yeah, I don't need the clutch. I don't need the clutch at like these sort of speeds. And in the rut, it's even easier because the ground's closer to your feet. So try first gear through that rut nice and steady no clutch look up and just both feet off the pegs just dabbing so that's the big thing for me is looking at the end of the track yeah. so at the end of the you don't want to be if you're looking 10 15 feet in front of you you're gonna your front wheel's gonna be on balance you should start leaning forward whereas if you're looking up you tend to naturally want to lean back more so you as you lean back get more, to that point and stop <coughs> like if you're doing this exercise well this is a drill just to show that really a, a, a beginner and intermediate level on a dirt bike the clutch is really an unnecessary tool it's only when we start wanting to do logs or drift or fire out of corners or do jumps that we really start needing to bring in the clutch in and one of the biggest things that i see when i green lane with people is people complaining of arm pumps sore hands my arms are getting tired because you're riding the clutch like a fucking blackpool donkey and you don't need to just be in the right gear for your speed and stay off the clutch. So let's do, we'll do another two or three laps each round there. Um, that exercise, paddling, no clutch, first gear, and then we'll have a break. Do I have to have my hand off like you did? Do I have to have my hand off like you did? I say, do we have to ride one-handed like you did? Not doing one-handed. No, that's what you did, didn't you? Say again. When you came back up here, you were riding one-handed. Yeah, so no clutch. Oh, I see. Say no clutch. Yeah, I can hold both bars, can I? <laughs> That's it, so what he says is he was just demonstrating that he won't use this club. We trusted him anyway, didn't we? We believed him. We believed him anyway. So now then, I don't suppose we have to ride on tick over. Oh no, we've got to paddle, haven't we? I've just remembered. So no clutch. But we're going to paddle. So we've got both feet down.
happen to mean I mean I'm not because your feet are down you kind of get a bit more balance anyway because you've lowered your centre of gravity because your feet are sort of hanging low but I mean I'm doing the odd dab um, but it's not really necessary let's see what happens when we go around this corner look so we'll have to go around the corner a bit quicker This is a good seating position though, when you uh, the bike kind of just steers itself, the bar seems to go left to right. I'll try and look down. So we got to... There we go, full range of bikes here today. Let's get back around during the back of the queue. And now we use the clutch again. There is still a good amount of grip available. If I ride down here and lock my front wheel up, it doesn't actually lock the front wheel up. I might do it one handed this time. See if it can fall off. Please I grease my wheel bearings before today's session. Packed them full, keep the water out. Okay, so legs down. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it one handed. Seems I put my hand up. Got it up for a bit, let's see how many seconds. One, two, three, four. Four seconds one handed. Get in. So if we go back up to standing position now. <laughs> I see. Someone's getting bored then, aren't they? <laughs> Let's go back to the seat position, do what we're doing, so take a little while. What gear are in though, anyway? Still in first. So, And this will be lap three then, so... Okay, bike's ticking over. Okay, then into the paddle, so feet down. Look ahead. Body position, lean back. Well, not lean back, but... In the middle there. Seated forwards. Oh, I've used my clutch. I've just used my clutch. I completely forgot. Let's try and ride up on this bit.
and walk back. So I'm gonna. On these tracks, we have to uh, take it steady. You're not allowed to go tear off and about. When he said TV, I think he meant YouTube. If I'm pretty sure he meant YouTube, not TV. What is TV? I don't even know what TV is. Look at that, it sounds awesome. With its acropovic exhaust system on it. So if you want to drift, which we're not, yeah. You can just crack on with it. Should get the, give the bike a little bit of a wash through here as well. We've got the long water in a minute. So we go, lean back, cater okay, something in here. We're back to camp. What's happening here? He's trying to he's trying to T-bone me. We got through the <laughs> missiles. Okay, session one, brilliant. 